The Avengers vs. The Peter Factor by Midnight Wolf 2192. Ha Chapter 4 Happy. Happy kept one hand on the lead kid's shirt as they walked, and the other was around Peter. Ned was waiting for them outside the locker room, and he threw his jacket over the slightly shivering Peter. The group walked down to the office, and the secretary looked up in confusion. I need to see the principal. Now, please. The woman jumped to her feet and knocked on Marita's door. The door opened, and Principal Marita emerged, looking confused. What's going on here? he asked as he looked over the sheepish and terrified-looking group to the soaking wet Peter. He stepped to the side and the large group walked into his office. Can I help you, sir? My name is Happy Hogan, Happy exclaimed. Finally, let the lead kid go, but it stood in his path, just in case he tried to make a break for it. I work for Tony Stark. I am sure you know that Peter here has an internship with Mr. Stark, and as part of that, I come and pick him up from school on internship days. Yes, we've, we have been informed. Principal Marita said, and Happy nodded. Today, Peter was late coming out to the car, so I came to, in to find him, Happy continued. The kid was still trembling, so Happy slipped off his own jacket and threw it around the kid as well. I found him in the locker room, surrounded by these boys. I believe they will tell you the rest. Happy listened as the group exclaimed what had happened, and while this was happening, he pulled Peter to him again. The boy had stopped shaking physically. Happy could tell he was still cold. Principal Marita, my father will be wondering where I am, the lead kid said with a smirk, and Happy watched as the principal attempted not to roll his eyes. I'm sure this cannot be forgiven. We will apologise to Parker. Don't even think about it, Happy growled and the kid tensed. Happy pulled out his phone and opened it up. Principal Marita, I'm sure you're aware of New York's one-party consent wiretapping law. Well, I would like to provide evidence that I think indicates that by letting this go, Peter will be in danger. Happy played the recording from the locker room, and the kid paled even more. Principal Marita nodded in understanding and turned to the boys. This is not the first time I've had you boys in front of me, Principal Marita said while the lead kid attempted to look cool. The other six bowed their heads. Given the circumstances, the general response here would be expulsion. Sir, Peter interjected, and Happy groaned softly. Dang this kid and his self-sacrificial behaviour. Need to give Tony a run for his money. Please don't expel all of them. Why should I not, Mr Parker? They have admitted to bullying you. Quite significantly, I might add, Principal Marita said, and the group of teens turned to face Peter. Sir, Daniel was the one who shoved me under the water and punched me, Peter admitted. The others were just doing as he said. They shouldn't be expelled for following the orders of an idiot. Hey! Daniel cried, and Happy stepped in front of Peter. The kid backed down quickly and dropped into one of the chairs in the room. You lot will have a lot to thank Mr Parker for, Principal Marita said after a moment. The six of you won't be expelled. You will, however, be suspended for 21 school days which is the maximum suspension time I can give you without expelling you. You will also be expected to write a detailed apology letters to Mr. Parker. The six of you will be removed from any teams or clubs you are a part of, and you will be barred from senior field trips as further punishment. Thank your lucky stars, Mr. Parker is a kind young man. I will be calling all of your parents now. Wait outside for them to arrive. The six boys walked out of the room, heads bowed and happy nodded at the punishment. Principal Marita asked his secretary to call the boys' parents before turning to Daniel. You, however, Mr Brewer, no matter what Mr Parker says, you will be expelled, Marita said. The kid attempted to protest, but Marita held up his hand. I don't want to hear any excuses. You have physically assaulted a fellow student. Mr Parker is well within his rights to ask me to call the police and have you charged. No, sir, I don't want that, Peter said softly, and Happy squeezed the boy's shoulders. I understand that, Mr Parker, he said kindly. He then turned back to the infuriated Daniel. This will be going on your permanent record, and I will be ensuring that whatever school you end your senior year at will know what has happened here. You will stay in here while I call your parents. Mr Hogan, will you please forward me that recording? Principal Marita gave Happy his email and the recording was instantly sent to the other man. Is Peter still required to be here? I need to get in contact with Mr Stark and I need him to get home and dry, Happy commented. 
No, he is free to go. I am sorry this has happened, Mr. Parker, Principal Morita said, and Peter nodded. Happy led both Peter and Ned out of the office, past the six boys waiting by the secretary's desk, and out to the car. Ned, would you like a lift too? You've probably missed your bus by now. Yes, please, Mr. Happy, Ned replied. Happy unlocked the car, and while Ned climbed in, Peter paused before following his friend. Peter? Happy asked, but only the only response he got was an arm full of spider kid. I got your bud. Thank you, Happy. Peter murmured into Happy's shirt, and the man smiled. I know I've probably wasted most of my lab time, but could we please go to the tower? I just want to fill Tony and myself about what happened and why we're so late. Sure can, bud, Happy replied. He didn't let go of the kid until Peter pulled away. But first, we need food. Peter and Happy climbed into the car, and after dropping Ned home, Happy drove through a McDonald's drive through and just as they were leaving the restaurant, cheeseburgers, Big Macs, fries and nuggets on board, Happy's phone rang. Have you kidnapped my intern, Hogan? Tony's voice was teasing, but it came through the car speaker. Both Happy and Peter rolled their eyes at Tony's tone. Nah, just showing him something more fun than your boring lab. Happy teased with a wink in the rearview mirror to Peter. We dropped Ned off at home and grabbed food. We're about ten minutes out. Well, hurry up. There is science to be done, and BB-8 is missing his master, Tony said before he hung up his phone. Thanks for not telling him, Happy, Peter murmured, and Happy smiled at the kid. If it happens again, and you don't tell me, I will tell him, Happy warned. For now, though, I'll keep this secret, kid, as long as you aren't hurt. Once I have these burgers in me, I'll be fine, Happy replied, and Peter replied, and to Happy nodded. When they eventually arrived back at the tower, Happy climbed out of the car and opened the door for Peter. As they entered the elevator, Peter placed the drinks he had ordered on the floor. Before Happy could ask what was wrong, Peter wrapped his arms around Happy's middle again. Peter wrapped his arms around Happy's middle again. All right, enough with the mushy stuff, kid. I've got a reputation to maintain. Happy teased after a minute. Peter released him from the hug and picked the drinks up again. What reputation? Peter asked with a raised eyebrow, and Happy laughed. Unbeknownst to the pair of them, Tony was watching the scene from his lab. He didn't know what had happened to make Peter so cuddly with Tony's friend. But when he looked at Happy's face, Tony pulled up the chart and marked another Avenger fall into the Peter Factor. The Peter Factor 4, the Avengers, nil. <laughs>